When I woke up this morning in Bangkok, I decided I needed to get out of the city for a little bit. So I drove about 45 minutes south to the province of Samut Prakan. There is a huge fort here, there is a battleship, and there's mangroves and even a good seafood restaurant. So let's go and check these places out. Let's start with the most obvious attraction first. We are at the Chulamcham Klau Fort here in Samut Prakan. And this fort was built approximately March of 1884 by King Rama IV. And he built this fort in order to protect this coastal area of Thailand against invaders from England and France. There is a fort complex here, there's seven western cannons, and of course there is this giant battleship that we will go and tour in a little bit. One of the main reasons I came to this area is because I know there would not be any tourists here. If you guys have watched enough of my videos, you know that I like going to places where a lot of the tourists don't go. And this is something most people don't go to see, and that's why I brought you here. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will learn something new, see a new place, and hopefully be inspired to come check this place out or go out and explore another area that you've never been to. Well guys, I went into the exhibition room because there's a bunch of information in there, a bunch of displays, but I was promptly told by one of the military personnel that I couldn't be in there. Well, since we got kicked out of the exhibition hall, let's take a look at the actual fort and see what we can find. I know that there are seven cannons here and here is a map of the whole fortress so we can take a walk around and see where everything is. This fortress goes quite a ways, both left, straight, and right, and well, since I don't read Thai, let us start walking to the right and see what is down here. I think we're coming up to the entrance to one of the carriage cannons. There's, like I said, seven of them here. Quite the echo. Holy smokes. Look at this thing. It is gigantic. And the way these worked is they would actually raise up above the ground to fire, and then they would sink back down. So they would be hidden and out of sight. Very interesting to see this here. Uh, I've gone to a couple forts in the US, but I have not been to any here in Thailand. So this is, uh, ooh, look at this creepy little room. I'm not sure what's going on in here. Definitely got a duck and yeah. Okay, well, we're just gonna walk through this little room and continue exploring this fort here in the Samut Prakan province of Thailand. Continuing on, okay, we've got another cannon here, and I'm hoping to find one of these elevated because it would really be interesting to see what it looks like up above. As I mentioned, this canopy here would be moved and the cannon would be raised up so it could be fired. And each of these giant cannons takes 10 men to operate, seven men to load it, and then three men to fire it. Judging by the fact that there are four different wheels here, I would have to assume that it took four men to operate those wheels to rotate the cannon left or right. I can't imagine how much this thing weighs. Not really sure if any of these wheels turn. Oh, this wheel turns. What is it doing? It's not raising the cannon. It's not lowering it. Okay. okay, let's not break it and get thrown out. And for those of you wondering about the size of the projectile, well, there it is right there. I would say that it is about uh, almost two feet tall. So we're talking uh, almost uh, like two thirds of a meter or whatever the centimeter equivalent is of two feet. I'm not a military expert, but that long rod right there is what would be used to actually shove the projectile into the back end of the cannon here for it to be fired. So they would put the projectile here and then use the large loading tool to push it all the way in to the loading position. These cannons are called crouching tiger cannons for an obvious reason because, well, obviously they can hide down when not being used. And in 1893, King Rama V himself came out here and test fired one of these cannons. And this whole fortress was actually used during the Franco-Siamese War, and in fact, they had fired on a French warship. We've now come to the rooftop of the fort, and as you can see, there are seven different locations covering with tarps where the crouching tiger cannons would rise up and fire. I'm assuming that these canvases on top were not here when the fort was actually operational, and now they are just being used to keep the area cool for visitors. 
obviously when the fort was still being used, none of these trees existed here. This tree line would have, of course, blocked all of these cannons, but now it is not in use in just a museum. As much as I enjoyed looking at that fort, I'm as excited, if not more so, to see this giant battleship here. Let's go on board and check this thing out. I haven't been aboard this ship or actually any Navy TIE ships before, so this will be really interesting. Of course, the first thing you notice when you come aboard are these two giant torpedoes that are sitting right at the entrance. Next to them, I don't know what these are. These might be the tubes used to launch them. That's definitely what it looks like. There is a seat here and there is uh, some kind of a wheel for it to turn. And I'm guessing that they just turned them and launched them straight into the water. Guys, we're in luck. I think I found the person in charge and they're gonna talk to us. Hello, sir. Can you tell me about this boat, please? The ship? No? No? You just want to smell my hand? Okay, well, I, I guess he's not in charge, but let's go and take a look and I'll give you a quick walk around and show you whatever I can figure out on this ship. Ah, my favorite place, the galley. This is the kitchen of the ship and, well, we're going to have lunch a little bit later, but let's just do a walkthrough of the whole ship and see what else we can find. It looks like we have to go upstairs next. Skip that. Let's do the first deck first. I'm guessing over here is going to be more of the quarters and probably the uh, the captain's quarters. Um, nope, another kitchen. Look at me. I really don't know anything about ships. But this is the main deck. And there's a seating area here, obviously, for some of the crew, uh, some of the staterooms. I'm guessing that uh, this is one of the bathrooms here and the desk and bunks. This definitely looks like it was for the uh, higher level personnel, not for the enlisted men. Now walking to the front of the ship, and I'm sorry, I don't know the naval terms for the front or the back, or I don't even know which side is port and starboard, but look at this. We've got a giant cannon at front, and these, well, these are sea mines. These are mines that would be laid out in the sea for obvious reasons, and obviously when something came in contact with them, they would explode. Hopefully they are deactivated. <laughs> Unlike the mines on this battleship, we actually require contact for them to be used. These, I believe, are depth charges. And the way this would work is there is this mechanism here, and these would be fired out into the water, uh, and then they would explode at a certain depth for submarines. This is a depth charge, as far as I can tell. If I'm wrong, let me know if you know what this is. All right, let's climb up to the top and see what's up here. Let's go inside here and see what's on this deck. Okay, this is the meeting room. This is where the commander or whoever his uh, second in command was would give the briefings, the lectures, anything that they had to do for the day. People would sit here. Very, very familiar with uh, any kind of uh, military type organization. There's not a ton on this deck here. Obviously, another giant cannon at the front of the ship, which is you know important for a warship. I was gonna climb into this seat, but uh, the little footboard there, it will collapse. It won't even support a light person, let alone somebody my size. This cannon is absolutely gigantic. It's got two seats, I'm guessing. One is for the person that aims it and one for the person to actually fire it. Got a couple of lifeboats, two on each side, and that's about it. I'm guessing that is enough for the whole crew. But okay, let's make our way to the top. Oh, no, 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 no. I see something that, I don't know how I missed this, but uh, look at this. Um, can't really say what it is because YouTube, but uh, yeah, look at that little pew pew there. That is really cool. Of course, I, I can't leave anything alone. There's two sets of controls. This set of controls here will turn this up and down, and this one here will turn it left and right. I don't think any of them work. Uh, no, oh, this one kind of sort of turns. Yeah, let's not break it. But this is a beautiful piece of machinery. You can probably tell that I'm excited. I just love machinery, equipment, anything mechanical, electric, uh, electromechanical. So for me, this is a treat. Okay, let's go up to the top where the captain would actually operate the ship. There's probably a much easier way to get up here, but uh, yeah, oh, no, there's this rope. You know, I don't really plan these things out too well. Just kind of uh, go whichever way I can. All right, made it to the top and well, what do we got here? Yep, yet another one of these 
giant cannons, of course. Um, by the way, does uh, d does that rope mean that I wasn't supposed to climb that? I'm not really sure if I should be up here, but you know, we'll we'll get thrown out if uh, we're not supposed to be here. So let's take a look. Ah, uh, yes, this was the easy way up. Okay, restricted area. That sounds like uh, I think that says enter. I think that's what it says. And this would obviously be where the ship would be mainly operated from. This is the control room. I'm not really sure what this is, but probably a map here. And you have windows to the front. However, I don't believe that uh, there are any really controls for motion. This looks like a radar. The HTMS Meiklong was actually launched in 1936, three years before the start of World War II. There's so much cool stuff to see on this ship. I'm just excited to walk around it and look everywhere. And well, look, here's another staircase. So it looks like we can go another level above. And this has to be where the actual helm is. Here we go. Finally found the actual helm of the ship with the wheel, the instruments. And no, I was wrong. There is the map and it looks like another radar unit that was installed later on. But all the equipment you would need here, including the captain's chair. I wonder if I could drive this thing. I have no idea how, but that would be interesting. So much equipment up here for all sorts of things. Like I said before, I'm not a maritime uh, expert, military, or anything like that, but I think this is really interesting just to see everything up here, uh, including, like I said, the ship's wheel here, uh, hello, Galley. Yeah, I need uh, I need two hamburgers, a French fry, and a large vanilla shake. You gotta eat when you uh, when you drive. And I think now for the final deck of the the ship here. Beautiful view up here of uh, well, the muddy ocean here from Samut Prakan. Well worth the visit. Get out of Bangkok and go explore the other areas. Okay, now like I said, let's go find the mangroves and there's still a seafood restaurant here that has really good ratings. I'm hungry, so I'm dying to check it out. <laughs> Looks like all the school kids are here today. You know guys, before we venture off into, before we venture off into the mangrove, I think it's time to go eat something. I'm here at the HTMS Meiklong restaurant, so we'll try go get some food. Hi guys, Swati Kap. Sabadi Mai. They were way too happy to see me. There is a ton of school kids here. Hopefully I can get a seat. All right, we're gonna grab a table somewhere and grab some food. Of course, the whole menu is completely in Thai, so I'm just going to have to kind of guess something. Those school kids were way too excited to see me. It's as if I had traveled far away from Bangkok into a small province. There are definitely no foreigners here, and that's really cool. This is a place that a lot of locals will come to see the fort, to see the ship, and this giant seafood restaurant. I'm excited to eat. My food has arrived and I'm really happy that I'm going to be having a shrimp gang som. This is a sour soup with shrimp and some kind of a deep fried vegetable. One of my favorites. And I got a small rice with crab and cucumber. But this guys, this is one of my favorite foods. It's so good. I've had this once before. It is absolutely delicious. I still don't know what this little fried vegetable is. I think it's egg and something else, but let's see how the soup is. so so good not too spicy it's got this great sour taste to it and I'm pretty sure that this is egg with spinach and something else and well the flies are loving this too the shrimp mm. oh perfect I wanted the small meal not too heavy this soup really hits the spot I'm equally as excited to try this rice with the crab A little crab meat on top and well it's rice I love rice crab meat a little soup maybe mix it together which you're probably not supposed to but you know I don't care mm. really hits the spot I'm gonna finish this up and then we're gonna go and explore the mangroves which are literally right across the parking lot oh my god look at that monkey just running here in front of the restaurant oh my god here come all the monkeys look at these dudes tons of them 
had a great meal, even got to see some monkeys. All of that food came out to be 226 baht, which is $6.36. Quite delicious. And well, speaking of monkeys, there's one stealing stuff out of the back of this police truck. You really got to be careful with these dudes because they will steal anything and get their hands on. I think one of the reasons this place is not frequented by foreigners or tourists is because it is not easy to get to. There is no public transportation to this location. You will have to take a taxi, a bus, or in my case, I drove. However, I would definitely recommend you come out here because, well, it's an interesting place with not a lot of people and lots of history here. This whole area is basically an outdoor museum. It's right next to the fort and it has a bunch of Thai Navy pieces of equipment. As you can see through here, there's gotta be close to two dozen different things. Everything from cannons to even parts of a submarine that are displayed here. You can walk around, you can interact with them, you can touch them. Most of them have a plaque that will describe what they are and how they were used and when they were made. So if you're into military or if you're into Navy type of stuff, absolutely walk through here and take a look. But definitely keep an eye out for the monkeys because they are wandering around here. Oh, look, a friend. Hello, buddy. Sweaty cup. How are you, huh? Yeah, friendly? Oh, this guy's friendly. No food, sorry. Um, and that, that's a guy making noise in there. I'm not sure what's going on. I think the cadets are cleaning stuff up here and I thought it was a monkey, but uh, no, that's not a monkey. That is a human being. Even the dog's not sure what's going on, so he's walking away. All right, buddy, have a nice day. See you later. I have got to check this thing out. Oh my goodness. Wow. Look at this. Oh. I can honestly say that this is not a place I would honestly want to sit in a time of war, that is. Um, this is pretty frightening. I mean, just the whole thought of, of war is not pretty. Not here to glorify it, just showing you this museum and the grounds. Well, this would be uh, typical of Google and me getting lost. I was parked right over there. I drove all the way around through some dirt roads only to end up parked right over here. <laughs> right, there's the restaurant. I think the mangroves are over there. Let's go take a look. And yeah, I see monkeys over here. So we gotta be really careful because they will try to steal my phone. Looks like they're enjoying a peaceful lunch. And I think my entrance to the uh, mangrove forest is no longer this bridge is yeah it doesn't exist and it's just these dudes having lunch so let's uh let's just take a quick peep over here nope not getting into the mangrove and like i said the monkeys are having lunch and i'm not about to disturb them because they're uh, they're having a little bit of a feud over some of this food Obviously, they know this lady. Look at how friendly they are with her. She's able to just walk up and feed them by hand. No problem. Wow. There's your monkey whisperer. I mean, I don't think I would try to get that close, but obviously these guys are so domesticated. Well, I wouldn't say domesticated, but you know what I mean. They're pretty tranquil. Just eating their peanuts, chilling out. All right, buddy. All right, we're still trying to find the mangrove trail, although I have a feeling that this is it and it doesn't exist. Let's keep going around the corner and see if we can find it real quick. Oh, look, Mangrove Learning Center, five meters. So maybe this is the entrance. I drove by this and it looked like the entrance. So let's go take a look and see if we can get in here. I'm having my doubts, oh yeah. That's gonna be a big no. Um, there's not much at the other end anyways, but well, let's see if we can cross over. Yeah, this isn't gonna hold me. I think the easiest thing to do will be to just, whoa, not fall, is to cross over onto the other side here. Definitely gotta be careful walking on these beams because they are pretty old. And now as we approach the center, or the Mangrove Learning Center, or what have you. 
Uh, this doesn't look good at all. There's a nice little hut. There is more of a trail that I would love to take, but as you will see in a second, that ain't happening. There is just no way that I can get in there, which is a real bummer because this looked like a really cool trail on the map and it looked like a really fun place to explore. Hopefully they'll fix it. I can't complain. I got to see two of the three things that I wanted to see. Watch my other videos. Please make sure you take care of yourselves and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.